it's Trish. Have you ever wondered why and how people get cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other diseases and illnesses? In this edition of Health Buzz, we'll discuss the physiological causes of illness and disease. Let me preface this video with a verse from Shakespeare's Hamlet, Act 2, Scene 2. Mad, let us grant him then, and now remains, that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather say the cause of this defect, for this effect defective comes by cause, thus it remains, and the remainder thus. Causes, causes. That's what we want to know. If we want to cure a disease, we need to remove the causes. Managing symptoms, which drugs are designed to do, do not cure any illness or disease. For example, you hit your hand with a hammer. You take a pain reliever, which prevents the pain signals from reaching your brain. The pain is there, but you just don't feel it. Before we do this demonstration, let's do a quick physiology review of the human body. The human body is divided into organ systems. Organ systems containing organs. Organs are composed of tissues. Tissues are made of cells. Cells are made of molecules and molecules are made of atoms. As an example, the respiratory system has the heart as one of its organs. The heart is an organ made of heart tissues and the heart tissues are made of heart cells. When we get into the atoms and molecules, we're getting into physics. So in this example, we'll stick to cells. The cell is the basic unit of all living organisms. Humans can trace their existence as a single-celled organism with no nucleus back to about 4.3 billion years ago. Then those single cells eventually got together and formed multicellular organisms. Biologically, we're considered multicellular organisms. It is estimated that the human body has about 100 trillion cells. This number varies depending on the weight of the person. Each cell has a sp special function. For example, we have brain cells, muscle cells, skin cells, and so on. Now back to the 4.3 billion years of our cells' evolution. For hundreds of millions of years, our cells survived and thrived with oxygen, water, and nutrients. Substances that occur naturally in nature. So when we refer to natural health, it's implying anything that is biochemically compatible with the evolution of our cells or substances and food that our cells evolved with and are familiar with. We've heard adages such as, you are what you eat. Disease enters through the mouth. Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. The belly rules the mind. The purpose of eating is to supply our cells with energy so they can do their jobs. Everything we eat is absorbed, digested, and distributed via the bloodstream throughout our body to the cells so they can perform their functions to keep us alive. So how do our cells get sick? Hopefully this demonstration will provide a glimpse of the disease process. In this demonstration, we are gonna use Petri dishes, but since we couldn't find any, we're gonna use these fancy trays to demonstrate the cells of an unhealthy person these crushed up peanuts will be the cells and a healthy person. As we mentioned before, our cells need water, oxygen, and nutrients. These are biochemically compatible with our cells. Now what happens to our cells when we add things to our body that are not biochemically compatible? These are the cells of a healthy person. They need protein. We'll start with this egg. We'll pretend it's an organic egg, so it doesn't contain growth hormones, antibiotics, or steroids passed from the hen. Eggs are a complete protein because they contain all the essential amino acids. Now this healthy person's gonna eat some spinach, getting some minerals, and vitamins. Most plants are incomplete protein because most plants don't contain all the essential amino acids. So you might be wondering how vegans get their protein. 
Vegans eat a variety of plants that contain a spectrum of amino acids, and those amino acids form complete proteins, kind of like reverse engineering. Now this healthy person is going to feed themselves some more good stuff, like this grapefruit, which is full of healthy vitamin C. The cells of this healthy eater are well nourished, getting the nutrients that they need. The cells of the healthy eater are well nourished. Let's go to the cells of an unhealthy eater. The unhealthy person consumes two cans of cola a day. Some of the ingredients found in soda are glucose fructose, caramel color, phosphoric acid, natural flavor, and caffeine. The unhealthy person really has a sweet tooth and eats a lot of junk food like chocolate bars. Some of the ingredients are cocoa butter, lactose, soy lecithin, salt, and artificial flavors. What goes better with chocolate than chips? These unhealthy treats contain vegetable oil, salt, hydrogenated vegetable oil, and artificial flavor and dextrose. All of the ingredients that I've added into the unhealthy dish may sound delicious, but they can contain preservatives, additives, and artificial dyes. If we were to leave the ingredients of the healthy person's diet out, they would spoil right away. The ingredients of an unhealthy person's diet have a very long shelf life from all the preservatives. Which one is biochemically compatible with our cells? Research has shown that when cells are removed from our body, they can survive indefinitely when bathed in a culture of nutrients in a petri dish or pan. So when our body takes in this much junk, our cells can't use it for energy. So the body detoxes the foreign substances and gets rid of some of it. But we keep eating the same junk and it accumulates. When there's too much junk in our body, we get sick. In order to be healthy, we need to detox the unhealthy person's diet by removing some of the bad stuff and incorporating some of a healthy person's diet. Do you think that the record number of diseases and unexplained symptoms we're seeing have anything to do with what we're seeing here? As you can see, anything that comes into contact with our cells that is not a nutrient through the cumulative effect will result in the disease of those cells. When our cells are diseased, we are diseased. This only demonstrates substances making physical contact with our cells. What about non-physical contacts with our cells, such as those from electromagnetic radiation from cell phones and wireless networks? It has been shown that EMRs can penetrate the BBB, the blood-brain barrier, but that's a whole nother video. This demonstration only looked at the physiological cause of disease. So I'll leave you with this thought from Dr. Fred Loeffler, a naturopathic doctor. To be a physician in the truest sense, one must consider the patient's troubles from all these basic standpoints. Is it mechanical, nutritional, or physiological? Or is it a varied combination of all three? The human body is not composed of separate entities, but is a working unit in its entirety, and so must be treated as such. For the transcript of this video, click the Show Me More button below.